My friends, only Nintendo would ever put out a new video game and a Nintendo Direct presentation both on the exact same week. Welcome to the Mario Matter, episode 104, your favorite Nintendo podcast. I am your host, Nintendo YouTuber M. Swizzle. And if you'll notice, if you are a returning listener of the video version, you might notice we are not on our usual set. I am on a trip. I'm on a trip, and this is our remote set. I have the microphone all set up. Quality should still be pretty good. I have my second camera angle, which might not show up in the final version of this video. It depends how good my internet here is. Not quite sure yet, but my friends, we have a stacked show for you all today. We're going over Nintendo news to kick things off. Then we dive into to the brand new Nintendo visual novel horror game, Emio, The Smiling Man, Famicom Detective Club. After that, we dive into the Nintendo Direct Partner Showcase and Indie World presentation that aired, what was it, a Tuesday? Tuesday of this week, we dive right into that. Then we dive into the Q&A segment of the show, which I am renaming, if you are a returning listener, I am renaming it to the question block. A car just honked. I, I, I guess the car liked it. We are renaming the Answering Your Question segment to the question block. Should be great. Should be a fun time. Let's go ahead and not delay not delay the show. Let's dive into our Nintendo news to kick things off. Bruce Buffer, please read the intro. Welcome to the Mario Matter, the number one Nintendo podcast. Now, to be honest, my friends, there's not a whole lot of Nintendo news to share because most of it is the Emio game and the Nintendo Direct and Indie World, which we'll talk about later. We have my first impressions on the Emio game coming up next, and then my thoughts on the Direct. So, I do have a couple of things to share that have come out that are non Nintendo Direct, well, they are kind of related, but are not solely focused on the Direct. We have a couple things that did come out Nintendo news-wise. However, if you want to skip anywhere in the, in the podcast, there are timestamps down in the description. That's very fun. Our first piece of news is actually not even, you know, Nintendo news, but it's something that a lot of, I feel like, Nintendo fans are kind of into. And this happened, I believe, Tuesday, the same morning as the Direct aired. Very convenient timing because the demo for a non-Nintendo game, Epic Mickey Rebrushed, has just been released. I believe it's on all platforms. Uh, I believe Steam, definitely PS5, PS4, Xbox, Switch, all those platforms. You can now play the Epic Mickey Rebrushed demo. Now, if you don't know, if you aren't into it, Epic Mickey Rebrushed is a remaster of the Epic Mickey game for the Nintendo Wii. People are really interested. People are hyped. This game was kind of like a big cult classic. Like, it was one of the ones everyone loved back in the day. It's getting its remaster, and the demo is out. Now, you might be thinking, you might be asking, Max, have you played it? Well, the answer is no. Uh, I'm on a trip, and I've mostly just been working the whole time. Uh, I have not gotten to it yet. But will I get to it? The answer is yes. The answer is definitely yes. I did download the demo. I want to play it eventually, but even if you're like on the fence, you know, I guess about this game, if you're on the fence, if you're not totally sure, or you're just hyped for it, the demo is out there now. You can go get that. The next piece of news is even smaller. Uh, we have Nintendo. If any of you are attending PAX West 2024, which is a big gaming convention, you can get a free Legend of Zelda Echoes of Wisdom pin like a little pin that you put on your, I don't know, whenever I talk about pins on this podcast, I never know like what they're actually used for. Oh, put it on your shirt. I, I mean, I guess, but like, are you going to keep it there the entire time? I don't know. But from August 30th to September 2nd, the time that, you know, PAX West is going on, you will be able to pick up this pin while supplies last. Max, what is the pin? It's Zelda. It is Zelda with her little wand looking thing you can go pick that up it's totally free now you will need to sign in if you are at the nintendo area at pax west you will have to sign in with your nintendo my nintendo account uh you you can do that it's not hard just make sure that you are logged into your my nintendo account on your phone and then you will need to show them a qr code and that qr code is found in your account settings blah 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 blah, blah. they will probably walk you through it once you get there at pax west but you know 
I'm not sure many people listening are going to PAX West. Definitely some people, I'm sure. But like, you know, you know, this is the news that, that we have to work with. And our final two pieces of news before we get to me talking about the Emio game and the direct, the my, you know, my full thoughts on the direct. We have the Nintendo Direct <laughs> Partner Showcase and Indie World aired. That is part of our news, even though we will talk about that later. No, nothing really to say right now. We'll dive into it later. And then after that, the other piece of news, guess what, guys? Emio the Smiling Man Famicom Detective Club released. That's our other piece of news, <laughs> which we're going to talk about later. So no big point in talking about those right now. However, I do have one other topic to bring up about the Emio game. So whenever new games come out, doesn't matter who po who publishes them, Nintendo, Sega, whoever, all of the gaming outlets, the gaming journalists are quick to put out their reviews on the games. And we have the first reviews on Emio the Smiling Man. A lot of people like to go off of review scores and things like that to know if they want to buy a game or not. You know, are people giving it 10 out of 10s, 9 out of 10s? What is it, right? A lot of people like to know. And to my surprise, to my very surprise, Emio the Smiling Man has actually gotten like very, very, very good reviews. So the game is 50 bucks. It is a Nintendo made game that they, they had some help from a game dev studio, I believe called Mages. They had a bit of help, but here are the, you know, outsider journalist reviews on the game. I stole all of these from Stealth40k on Twitter, so shout out to you. Vooks, uh, who, who I'm not very, you know, familiar with, gave it a 10 out of 10. Nintendo Insider gave it a 10 out of 10. Wow. RPG Site gave it a 9 out of 10. Tech Radar, 9 out of 10. Digitally Downloaded, 9 out of 10. Gaming Bible, 9 out of 10. WCCF Tech, 8.5 out of 10. My Nintendo News, 8.5 out of 10. 8 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 out of 10. Out of, a lot of 8s out of 10s. <laughs> Se some 7.5s. And the lowest review for this game that is listed here is a 7 out of 10 from Nintendo Life, VGC, and Eurogamer. That is the lowest score this has gotten from, like, the major outlets. I don't know, man. A lot of people were kind of quick to dog on Emio, the Smiling Man, before they even played it, like, just kind of looking in, you know, oh, man, it's not a horror game like we thought it would be. The game sounds pretty freaking good. And because that is our last piece of news to go into right now, it is time, my friends, to get into my first impressions on Emio, the Smiling Man. I have played this game. I've played the demo. I've played even more. It's something special, but it might not be what you think it is, and you might not know whether or not to buy it. I am here to, to give you my thoughts, whether or not you should buy the game, whether or not it's even worth buying on sale, all of this kind of stuff. We will dive into it. Is it worth your $50? Let's go ahead. Let's get to my first impressions on Emio, The Smiling Man. A rated M for mature Nintendo game. My friends, we have to talk about Emio, The Smiling Man, Famicom, Detective Club. This morning, I got some fire pancakes, fire bacon, I feel very full, and then went to go pick up Emio, The Smiling Man, and we have it here to talk about. My friends, this game is one that ever since it was announced has had a lot of discussion, a lot of talk, a lot of hubbub. Right when this game was announced, Nintendo dropped a teaser, and it had this character with a paper bag over his head, and the caption of the teaser trailer was, Who is Emio? And everyone was like, man, this is about to be Nintendo's horror game. It's rated M for Mature. And then it gets revealed, and then you find out, well, it's not everything that we thought it would be, right? But either way, whether that was good news or bad news for you, this game came out, and this is the third game in the Famicom Detective Club series. There were two previously that were only released in Japan, then remade for Switch and released everywhere. This one now is a big talking point, a, a big deal now. And let me tell you, it's got... There, there's a lot. I, I'm going to dive into it now, but there's a lot to discuss here. I didn't want to spoil what I'm going to talk about, but let's go here. This is a horror visual novel. A lot of people don't like visual novels. However, I can tell you this right now. I'm going to dive into things. This might, you might want to have this be your first 
visual novel. This is a good entry. So, this is a horror visual novel point-and-click adventure where you are playing the role of a detective who is trying to solve a, let's put it this way, uh, as per Nintendo's description, a tragic death of a student in the area. It is a rated M for Mature game. That is the whole premise. You don't want little kids playing something like that, right? That's just how it is. That's per their description. This is 50 bucks, and Max talked to us about the game. So, I get into the game. It's everything that you would expect. Visual novel. All you can do in this game is it's a story developing and unfolding in front of your eyes. And you get to talk to people who are involved in the case, your other you know, detective partners, all these people to try and solve the case of who is Emio. Now, for those who may be unfamiliar with these kinds of games, uh, you know, as expected, they're pretty limited. So you're, you're not running around third person style trying to go and figure out this case and are doing crazy things. No, if you've seen the trailers, it's pretty much just a point and click, talk to people and watch the story unfold trailer. You can interact a little bit, like, for example, if I'm talking to Farmer Joe, who has information on this case, I can, like, click this lawnmower behind him and, like, interact with it. I can do things like that, but essentially, you're talking to people and getting more info on the story and watching it unfold in front of your eyes. If you're looking for a platformer-type game, this is certainly not it. If you're looking for a more fun, speedy game, this ain't it as well. It is like you're reading a book, but you can interact. Not exactly like this, but it's almost similar to like Minecraft Story Mode, where you can interact a bit. You know, Minecraft Story Mode is more interactive than, than this is. But, you know, you see a story, then you can do certain things. It's kind of like that, but also that might be a bit of a, a bit of a bad, you know, kind of comparison. So, you're learning about this whole case. You are playing the role of a detective. Max, how do you like the game? Would you recommend it? Any of this kind of stuff. So let's get into the good and the bad. The, the very good is I, you know, because I do this for a living, I had to go back and play the previous two Famicom Detective Club games. And while those games were all right, I have not even beaten this Emio game yet. And I can tell you this is probably the best one. This is most certainly the best one. Simply because... With the first two games in the Famicom Detective Club series, I was playing them, and I would get into the story, and I was like, all right, yeah, this is this is pretty fancy, not too shabby. And then I get into the Emu game, and I can't put it down. I, I seriously, I'm not saying that to, like, just love every single Nintendo game that comes my way. I'm being honest, and... Based on the journalist reviews for the game, based on if you look at other people's like content creator, re re you know, reviews, you can see a lot of people feel this way. The story, it throws you right in within the first three minutes and maybe even less, maybe even less than three minutes. You're, you're thrown right into the whole story. And it's interesting. I won't spoil any of it. You can play the, the demo now, which will give you the whole spiel, but you're just thrown in. You're, you're thrown in. And you're always thinking about it. Like, it's so interesting. If you're a murder mystery kind of person, like, who, who likes that kind of stuff, it's, oh, I can't explain it too much. I, I don't want to spoil, but it's just really good if you're into the murder mystery stuff and the detective work, all that kind of stuff. This is for you, 100%. Now, a good game does not come out without its faults. This game does have a couple of cons that you should know about, I would say. And the biggest con, the 100% macho man biggest con that they did not fix from the previous Famicom Detective Club games to now is how you progress in the game. And if you've played the demo, you might know what I'm talking about. They did improve it with this MEO game, but it's still not gone. So, this might be a bit of a mouthful. I'm going to try to make it as easy as possible to, to follow. So, in this game, you are a detective, as I've said. And you are talking to people, gathering information about this case. Let's say I'm talking to Farmer Joe, 
who maybe was a witness of this whole thing happening, right? Just hypothetically, it's, it's not a real thing, right? And when I'm talking to Farmer Joe in this game, I see a picture of him on screen and I can do a few different things. Here are the five things that, that you can do when you are talking to somebody in the game. You can either call slash engage, which I believe is you can talk to other people. You can either ask slash listen, which is like talk to him about what he saw. You can look slash examine, which means look at things in the background of the area and like interact with them and see if you, if you can like find clues off of that. You can think, which means it'll make your character be like, man, Farmer Joe is saying all this. He might be guilty. Like it makes your, your, your character think and might make you progress that way in the game. Or you can save and quit the investigation. There are five options whenever you are talking to somebody. There's occasionally six, but most, most times it's five. Five, five. It's five options there. Very simple. But here's the problem. So let's say I hit the ask and listen button. Farmer Joe tells me about something that, that he saw. Good info, right? Then I can't progress. I can't like go on to the next thing in the game. So then I hit the look and examine button. I hit the look and examine button and I click something in the background. Doesn't let me progress. All right, I can't progress yet. Let's hit the think button and see if I can, you know, get a piece of dialogue that'll let me progress. I hit the think button. I can't progress. You're stuck just clicking every single option until you can get somewhere in the game. If that makes sense. Like if all these buttons don't work, like you're, you're, you're just at a point where you're clicking every button, trying to get more dialogue, like a different piece of, di piece of dialogue that'll let you progress. That's what I don't like. That's the only thing that I really have a problem with is it's just like, you're not playing at that point anymore. It's just, you are clicking buttons, trying to get the next interesting thing to happen. That's what's going on. Now, for the most part in the MEO game, you will be fine. You will run into that problem definitely a few times, but in the first game, the first two Famicom Detective Club games, it was like that, where you just had to brute force every single option until you can progress. And sometimes it would be like minutes until you can progress, like five minutes of just clicking every single button possible or like clicking the right object in the background. That's the only con, the only thing. It's hard to progress, and I will probably get, like, get clowned for this. I always say in every Nintendo game that there should be a, quote, hint feature. And I said that about Luigi's Mansion 2 HD, and I'm saying it about MEO now. Like, you gotta let me, tell me the answer. If I can't progress, you gotta tell me the answer. And this is not just me. I made sure I wanted to like look online to see if I was doing something wrong. So I looked online for Emmy, uh, sorry, uh, for Famicom, Detective Club, the previous two games. I looked for reviews. Everyone said the exact same thing. You just have to brute force options until you can progress. So you're stuck there for a bit. You are, you are stuck for a amount of time just clicking buttons. But the fact that that is the only con that I have with this game speaks volumes. The game is pretty good otherwise. It's a very engaging story. And this gets hard for me to talk about because the selling point of the game is the story, but I don't want to spoil it for you. So it's like, where do I go from here? I guess we can go here. Should you buy the game? It's tough for me to say yes or no. So here's what I will say. Because Emio the Smiling Man has a demo I would recommend you 110% to play that first because this is not a game like Mario Wonder where you can pick it up and, you know, most people will probably have a fun time. No, it's not It's not like that. It's, it's really not like that. This is a visual novel. People, I know people who will get bored like that, like in a snap, playing a visual novel game. You have to make sure that, that you're into this sort of thing. I would say download the demo, play the first chapter, maybe even two chapters, and if you're into it, then you buy the full thing. There's no need to buy it up front. There's no benefit of buying games early, you know? Like, I bought this on launch day. No, nothing happened. Didn't get it for any cheaper, didn't get any bonus for it. Sometimes there are bonuses, but like for this one, didn't get anything. Take your time. Play the demo, and then if you 
finish all three chapters and you still want to play more, then you buy it. I would please recommend everyone to play the demo first. That is where you will find, that is the promised land for finding out whether or not you want to buy the game. It's 50 bucks in the US anyway. Could differ across the world, but 50 bucks here, which is $10 off of the usual Nintendo release. If you're looking for a cold cut yes or no answer from me, once again, it will depend if you like visual novels, but my answer is yes. I have not really seen a better story in the game. The only other story that I can compare it to, which is crazy, the other visual novel that came out this year is another code recollection. I really love that game story and I don't know which is better yet. I have to beat this Emio, this, this, uh, Emio game to find out first, but this game has a story and it's kind of spelled out for you. It is a murder mystery. This guy is going around. I, I, I don't want to keep saying murder, committing crimes. And you have to figure out who this guy is with the paper bag over his head. If that's not interesting you, it's probably not for you. But like for me, I kind of like that. I, I kind of like that, that stuff, you know? So I would buy the game. I would say if you're looking for a cold cut answer, if you, if you have no time to play no demos, but you somehow have enough time to play the whole game, uh, the answer is yes, I would buy the game. Uh, it is rated mature though. And I understand. I, I, I understand that a lot of my audience uh, is not over 18. Um, so this could be a total skip for a lot of you. Uh, just, you know, due to the ESRB rating. But if you can play it, I would say yes. But please, please, I beg of you, play the demo first. There is a demo. There is no reason not to play it. It gives you the first three chapters. You are not limited at all in what you can do. There's just an ending point to the demo. Play it, please. But that is my thoughts on Emio, the Smiling Man. Very cool game, but I can't talk too much because I don't want to, like, give it all away. But yes, Murder Mystery Please enjoy it and let me know in the comments if you have played the demo and what you think of it. I would love to hear if I am alone. Uh, so far, based on my first impressions, I would give it the game like a... I would give it the game a... Man. Like a, like a 7.8 out of 10. Very, very specific. Uh, I guess we can just round up and call it a, call it an 8 out of 10. Yeah, I would give it an, an 8, of course, for what it is. Now, me giving this game an 8 out of 10 and me giving Zelda Tears of the Kingdom uh, a, I don't know, let's say, for example, I gave that an, an 8 out of 10. It's not the same thing, but for what this game is, a visual novel, 8 out of 10 visual novel. There you go. But now, my friends, it is time to get to the title of the podcast, the biggest, biggest talking point over the last few days, and that is the Nintendo Direct Partner Showcase plus Indie World. That's, that's just something. That is, when have you ever seen them do two presentations back to back? I've been a closely following Nintendo fan for two, three years. Like, I mean, like very close, like don't miss a thing for like two, three years. And I don't, I don't remember this. <laughs> Maybe it happened a while ago. Maybe it happened in, in like 2020. I don't know. It's been a, it's, 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 it's a freaking deal, but we will talk about it right now. Nintendo Direct and Indie World Thoughts. Let's go ahead. Let's get freaking to it. So last week, my friends, everyone was storing the rumor pot saying, guys, a Nintendo Direct is coming soon. Please keep your eyes out. And I'm not going to lie to you. As much as I would love to say, dude, I totally, I totally 100% expected that. I thought there was no way we were getting a Direct this week. Because of the Emio game. What company drops a Direct and a game the same week and not show off that game that you were releasing in that Direct? It makes no sense. Why not space it out? What's the harm in spacing them out? There is none. So really, I didn't believe it. However, I'm not surprised in the same way because Nintendo does like their end of August directs. They did an a, a end of August direct last year for Mario Wonder. The year, the year before, they did one for Splatoon 3. They like their end of August directs. They do like that a lot. So I'm not surprised, but I am surprised. It's hard to say. But my friends, at 10 in the morning Eastern time on Tuesday morning, the 27th of August, we got our indie world shown to us. Now, when I was live streaming this on my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash mswizzle, 
I was, I was kind of surprised. A lot of people didn't know what an indie world was, and I, I, I don't blame you. I didn't know what they were for the longest time. I'm just saying, like, I'm surprised the idea of it has not caught on more, and I think that's Nintendo's fault. Like, you gotta describe to us or to, to, to some people what an indie world is, because not everyone knows. I didn't know for the longest time, so I don't blame anybody that does not know. An indie world is a showcase of games, essentially, you know, put simply, that are made by a small team or even some, sometimes one person. It's different all the time, but generally by a small team. And we got our indie world shown to us. Now, I will go ahead and run you through all the games that were shown one by one and give my thoughts. Now, it doesn't sound, sorry, it won't be as boring as I made it sound, because uh, I do not have thoughts on every single game. But here is all the, all that was announced, and I will stop at the ones that I think I'm going to buy slash are interesting. First up, we had Bellatro, Friends of Jimbo. Now, they kicked this indie world off to show in this Bellatro game, which I've heard about and I feel like I would like to get into. And it seemed like they were just doing collab after collab after collab. They had a, they had an Among Us collab. They had a, I believe, a Witcher collab. They had everything. So we got some Bellatro. And then, then we had a Nava game. The game is called Nava. Uh, I know some people who came out of that direct who were pretty hyped about it. I looked at it and I watched it and it wasn't for me, but I'm happy for those who do uh, look forward to that game. We had Moth Cubit, Coffee Talk Tokyo, which I've heard is good, but I've, I've not played that. Sea of Stars, The Rose of the Watchmaker DLC. I never played Sea of Stars, but I've heard good things. Power Wash Simulator Shrek Special Pack. I have played some Power Wash Simulator. The devs gave me a code for it, which I greatly appreciate. And uh, I have played Power Wash Simulator a little bit. It's what it is. It, it, it is a power washing simulator. It's like satisfying. And now they have a Shrek Special Pack DLC. God, was it free? DLC regardless. <laughs> uh, we had Morsels, which also people liked, but I was not into, man. Date Everything, which I don't have any thoughts on. I don't know the full premise, but a lot of people are clowning on that game. <laughs> Peglin. Then let's stop here as the uh, fighter jet flies over my podcast set. Let's, let's stop here and talk about Wobbly Life. Wobbly Life was shown, and I was told, you know, this game has been out for a while, I was told, and I researched. I was told that this game is essentially like GTA meets Gang Beasts. You got these floppy dudes running around just doing whatever they want. Now, I'm excited for that to come to Switch. This is 100% a buy. I have bolded it in my notes. This is 100% a buy. Only problem is I think I'll buy it on Steam. It is on Steam. It is on PC. I have concerns about how that will run on Nintendo Switch. Now, will it run fine? Maybe. Will it run better on PC? Absolutely. I think I will opt to buy that on Steam when it's on sale, but kudos for coming to Switch. Can't blame them there. Pico Park 2 was a game that a lot of people were big on. I don't know if I'm not an indie world guy. I'm not sure what it is. Although it looked nice, I just don't realistically see myself buying that game. And that's no shade to it. Everyone likes what they like, you know? I like Animal Crossing. You out there might hate Animal Crossing. We all like what, what we like. I wasn't crazy fond of what I was looking at when Pico Park 2 was shown. I don't know. Shovel Knight, Shovel of Hope DX. I've heard good things about Shovel Knight. Never touched it, unfortunately. Europa, Cousineer, On Your Tail, Metal Slug Tactics, The Plucky Squire. Didn't really have many thoughts about, unfortunately. And then the final announcement was Pizza Tower, a game that a lot of people love and I believe is very, very fun too. Pizza Tower coming to Switch was a very, very good and big get for Nintendo. That's very cool. And that was, you know, there's not too many games that you can end an indie world with. I think that was one of them. I think Pizza Tower, sorry, P Pizza Tower was one of them. It's, it's not... 
not one of them, you know? That was a good game to end off with. Now, I only talked about one game, two games, Wobbly Life and Pizza Tower. Those are the only two that I might buy. Pizza Tower, well, not on Switch. I'm, I'm, I'm not buying it on Switch. Um... Wobbly Life, I'll buy it on PC. Like, I'm not a Switch Indie World kind of guy. I only have, like, a few Switch Indie World games. Stardew Valley. And... That is all I can think of. I'm not a big indie guy. Now, I do have some indie games on PC, but not on Switch. It's just not a thing for me. So, that is why I don't have much to unpack there. But I do have much more to unpack. Because after this Indie World aired, Nintendo gave us a Nintendo Direct. And that is what we can write home about. So there were a lot of good things shown off in this Nintendo Direct Partner Showcase. Which means, although Nintendo games can still be shown off in Partner Showcases, like like published Nintendo published games, we saw it happen with Endless Ocean. It's not likely, and you should not expect a Nintendo game to be in these presentations. And that, we did not... Well, we actually did get a Nintendo game. We'll talk about it, right? But they began the Direct by showing off Tetris Forever, which was a big old Tetris bonanza. There's a lot of Tetris to be played in that game. Yes and no, like, I can play... I can boot up Tetris on my laptop right now and play big old collection type games and I, I know it's more than a collection I'm not you're not gonna get my money I'm sorry Star Overdrive actually didn't look too bad but eh skip Goat Simulator 3 I love Goat Simulator but it it, it kind of peaked back in like 2016 when I was playing like 2015 when I was playing it on the Xbox One like now am I really gonna buy Goat Simulator 3 on Xbox, I'm sorry, on Switch. Not really. I mean, even the the uh, ambulance is running around ringing right now. Uh, someone probably just played too much Goat Simulator. Uh, the Legend of Heroes <coughs> Trails in the Sky, the first? Nah. Star Wars Hunters, I'm glad people are happy about it, but eh. Stalker, Legends of the Zone Trilogy, Worms, Armageddon, Anniversary Edition, Disney Dreamlight Valley Update, Listen, I tried to get into Dreamlight Valley and couldn't fully do it. I'm happy if you're happy, but maybe I pick up Dreamlight Valley this fall. I I own the game, but I've not really, really gotten into it. Uh, a few hours played, but I don't think that's a lot to get it, to get a whole lot done. So, eh. But then the next game, I keep going on with these games, not having good thoughts about them. But the next game was like, yeah, give me that. We got SpongeBob SquarePants, the Patrick Star game. And that was, I think, the first real highlight for me. The Patrick Star game, I knew about, and a lot of us knew about, before it was announced. Now, you all might think, yo, that was first announced, you know, wasn't leaked beforehand or anything in that direct. No, no, no. About three weeks ago, I had Russ Vandy on the podcast, another Nintendo. U Nintendo YouTuber, and we talked about how this Patrick Star game was leaked. Now, we didn't leak it, of course, not to take any sort of credit, but if you want to know when games are coming out, you might want to watch the Mario Matter, because we tell you every single time. We talked about the Patrick Star game beforehand being leaked, so it wasn't a big surprise. After that, we had N Nintendo's December game, I guess would be the best way to put it. Uh, fitness Boxing 3, your personal training. It's the classic fitness boxing series, but you can have a personal trainer. He he'll like hold pads for you and you can box with the Joy-Cons. It's like Nintendo's half version of Wii Fit, but not really. It's it's like Switch Fat. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's, that's, a, that's a bad name for it, but... Fitness Boxing 3 was shown. I have a Fitness Boxing 1. I bought it for a video. Uh, should you buy a Fitness Boxing 3? I guess if you're into the games, maybe. Capcom Fighting Collection 2. I'm so happy for whoever loves that. But I'm just... I'm, an, I'm a Nintendo boy. I'm an Animal Crossing fan. I'm a fan of 
cozy games, I, I guess you would put it, like Stardew and all that. I'm not buying Capcom Fighting Collection, but absolutely nothing against it. Like, it's just not my kind of thing. But I know, I know, there's a huge, you know, community of people who like that game. And I'm happy for you, but you're listening to my thoughts, unfortunately. And my thoughts are, I'm not into it, I will not buy it. But I'm happy for those who do want it. Then you had Marvel vs. Capcom Fighting Collection Arcade Classics, Suikoden Dragon Quest, which was shown off beforehand, but uh, before at the last June Direct, I believe, but not into Dragon Quest. This, dude, this Direct makes me seem like I'm not into any games at all. Just wait until the next main Direct comes around. I'll be talking about everything aside from like the, you know, the games that didn't really stand out. Trust me, this Direct just wasn't for me. Atelier Yumiya. Oh, wait, I, oh, oh, I skipped that one. Atelier Yumiya be, uh, came before Suikoden and Dragon Quest. Castlevania, Sid Meier's Tales of Graces. And then we had a game that, you know, a lot of people probably said, Ugh, what the heck is this? But I was jamming out. And that is My Sims Cozy Bundle. Now, My Sims was a DS and Wii game. It was a spinoff to the Sims series. I mean, to put it simply... And listen, this game created a lot of childhoods. It's not like these games, but you know how a lot of you might have some nostalgia for like Club Penguin or like Webkins or like Moshi Monsters, whatever it was. This wasn't, of course, an online game like that, but it's, it kind of morphed a bunch of people's childhoods in the exact same way. So My Sims coming back was very, very cool to see. And guess what? That also got leaked b uh, beforehand. So EA and Outright Games, who made these Patrick Star game, they can't keep nothing secret. <laughs> like, come on, you freaking lock things down a bit more. Then you had Five Nights at Freddy. Then you had a, a bit more gameplay of Disney Epic Mickey Rebrushed, which I will buy, but we already knew about, so not much to write home there. I am buying that game. I believe if you pre-order it, you can get a little digital bonus. I got it from Best Buy, and it's giving me like a digital skin code or something. So if you're going to buy that game, you know, look into maybe maybe, maybe pre-ordering it. Tales of the Shire, a Lord of the Rings game. That game was shown in the last Direct, I believe, the last main Direct, and it looks good. I don't know how much it costs. Do we want to look at how much it costs? Uh, I'm assuming it'll be like 40 bucks. Let's see. Tales of the Shire. It looks good. It's like one of those like farming type games that people love to talk about. Uh, according to Steam, there is no price out there yet. But that one looks good. I might buy it for the right price or I might buy it on sale. I will have to see. But that game does not look bad. Just Dance 2020, sorry, 2025, Funko Fusion, EA Sports FC 25, Lego Horizon Adventures, which looks pretty good, Rune Factory, Guardians of Azuma, and then your final announcement, Yakuza Kiwami. Did I say that right? I pray. Please don't kill me, okay? Here come the hate comments if I said it wrong. But um, instead of talking about this Yakuza game, I actually want to talk about this, and this is very related, so don't think that I'm going off topic here. So, if you might be able to infer, based on me not being crazy fond of a lot of the games in this Direct, that the final announcement of, y of Yakuza was not totally for me. And that's fine. Different Directs for different people, and a lot of people online said they didn't really care for the Yakuza game. But I still understand there are a lot of people who are hyped about that. And I wasn't sure if I was going to say this on the podcast because, you know, I just didn't know. But hopefully I can maybe like spark a change or something or, or like a talking point. If somebody, if you're a creator online and you voice, you know, not negativity, but just like I'm not into this sort of game. And that game is a cult classic. The amount of just vitriol that comes after you when you voice your opinion like that is insane. I mean, it's crazy. I didn't have the best reaction when Yakuza came on the screen. 
I, I, I wasn't like, man, this sucks. But I was like, man, I wanted something else, right? It, uh, I got ripped. I, I got ripped for not being into Yakuza. Not saying that I hate the game or anything. Not being into it. I got ripped online. Maybe ripped is a strong word, but definitely got a fair share of comments like, bro, how the heck are you not into Yakuza? You suck. You're, I won't even repeat it. Dude, everyone's into certain things. If a freaking Animal Crossing announcement is shown at the next direct, I guarantee you there's someone out there who will be like, uh, another farming game, not knowing that it's Animal Crossing, my favorite franchise. I'm not going to go to you and say, you suck. Different strokes, different folks. I don't know what to say. Like, I got ripped heavy for not being into Yakuza. In person, too. It's insane. So, I mean, at the end of the day, wasn't an announcement for me. I'm happy for those who got their announcement of, of Yakuza. But I just, in the whole community as well, like the whole gaming content creator space, anyone who voices their opinion, I would wish for less hateful talk when someone's not into a cult classic game. And, you know, there are probably better examples of cult classic games. But, like, this vitriol needs to stop, I feel, because it happens a lot. If you're not into a certain game, people will rip you heavy. You have to be into everything. It sounds like I'm being bitter. I'm trying not to be, but it's just like, that's insane to me. It's like everyone likes different things. And let me know in the comments if you've seen this kind of stuff going around. I see it all the time. I will see a content creator's tweet. You know, didn't love the Yakuza announcement, but still a great, still a great direct. Dude, do you know when you scroll on Twitter and there are sometimes hateful, hateful replies that Twitter hides from you and it says, show more, but these might be offensive? There's like five of those. It needs to change and hopefully can change, but I don't know. Now, getting back on topic here. If you want my thoughts on the entire 40-minute hoopla presentation as a whole, direct and the indie world, let's break it up and then do it combined. So, for the indie world itself, I would honestly give... Don't, don't kill me. Don't kill me. I would give it a 3 out of 10. <laughs> now, objectively... I would give it a 6 or a 7 out of 10. Because a lot of people got a lot of cool things. You got Pico Park, you got freaking Pizza Tower, you got all that kind of stuff. For me personally, I'm not really buying any of that. And if I am buying it, it's on Steam. So for me, I give that a 3 out of 10. For the Direct, on, on the other hand, I give it... You know, I got Patrick Starr, I got My Sims, I got um, a few other, like like Epic Mickey we knew about, but was shown and stuff. Disney Dreamlight Valley, uh, I, I would give it a 6.5. 6.5 out of 10. Still nothing that I'm like, yeah, you know? But I think, and I, I said it on stream, I think for me to have come out of this positively for myself, not objectively, I think I needed one more thing. There were heavy rumors of a Call of Duty game being announced in this direct, and we didn't get it. That's fine, but I think if that was in there, I would be like, you know, I'm not a huge Call of Duty fan, but that's a big, like, I'm going to buy it kind of thing. So, you know, I think I needed one more thing, one more announcement, whether it was an update to my favorite game, whether it was, you know, once again, Call of Duty, whether it was a new cozy type game that I can play. I needed one more thing, I think, for, for this to be a very solid direct. Uh, or no, just even solid at all, you know, just a solid direct. I needed, I needed one more announcement. That's all. But either way, it could have been a lot worse and we could have had no direct. So what am I complaining about? And although I am not the happiest in the world with this direct, I will say this positive news. We are that much closer to a Nintendo Switch 2 reveal. And I won't get the rumor mill started. But that's where we stand. They're getting their directs out of the way. They're doing all this. Nintendo Switch 2, I would bet on, gets revealed in September or October. Could I be wrong? Absolutely. But I don't know. Like, are we really going to have a September direct next month now that we just had this? 
it's 100% possible. They do it all the time. In 2022, they had their Splatoon 3 Direct at the end of August. Oh, sorry, August. Then they had their September Direct. At the end of 2023, they had their Mario Wonder Direct at the end of August. Then they had their September Direct. It makes sense and it is 100% doable. But there's one difference from this Direct and Indie World and those Splatoon, uh, these, uh, sorry, the Splatoon Direct and the Mario Wonder Direct. The difference is this Nintendo Direct Partner Showcase showed off a bunch of games that you could fill up a normal Nintendo Direct with. It showed off Epic Mickey, showed off Patrick Star, showed off My Sims. You could have put all of that in a normal September Direct. They kind of just use all their games to fill a Direct up with, you know? So is there really going to be a September Direct? There absolutely could still be, but your chances drop a little bit. They definitely drop a little bit. So that could mean Switch 2 coming soon. Are you going to show more brand new games? You can, but Switch 2, I think, is on the horizon. I think it's coming soon. Not to get the rumor mill started, but to my friends, that is it for Nintendo Direct Talk. It is now time to get to your favorite segment of the week. For the first time ever, we have named this segment the Question Block segment, where I, M. Swizzle, answer your questions you have asked me. Let's go ahead and let's get to it. My friends, this is your favorite segment of the week. The, an- the so, I'm so used to saying it, I have to switch my mind already. The Question Block segment. And the reason why I thought of that name for the Answering Your Question segment It could not be more perfect. It is a question block, and we're answering questions. It is a question mark. It couldn't be more perfect. Welcome to the question block, my friends, where I answer your questions. If you want to leave me a question to answer, there is a link down below to get to my YouTube community tab. And every single Tuesday or Wednesday, it's actually become Tuesday recently, so check back. Tuesday, 10 a.m. Eastern Time, look for the post where I ask for questions, set a little, you know, reminder on your phone, or even if you're just chilling on a Wednesday the day after I post it, feel free to scroll on my community tab, and it won't be too long until you see the post where I ask for questions. And you might think, Max, you know what? I was going to say, you all might think, Max, why don't you make a, make a Discord thing where anyone can ask questions on the podcast? And you know what? I think I will make a Discord channel that is for podcast questions. I used to have one where people could just like drop questions and I will I I would answer them. I think I'll I'll just make one for podcast questions. So you you can also join the Discord server down below and I will make a channel called Podcast Questions and you can ask me questions in that channel any time of the week. I will do that. Uh, I used to do that, then I, del- then I, you know, deleted it, then I brought it back, then got rid of it, you know, whatever. I will make that channel again. But our first question comes from Splat Knight, who asks, a very fitting question, how do you like vacations? If you guys could not tell, uh, there's wind blowing around, we got, you know, ambulances running through, we got fighter jets flying above me, we got kids jumping in pools, I mean, there's a lot of ambiance here. Uh, on the set of the Mario Matter recording. Wind's just now picking up. What can I do, right? That's not negatively affecting my vacation, though. I am on a bit of a vacation. When you're seeing this podcast, I'm home now. But I like vacations. The only thing is, like, I... And this sounds stupid. I, I have to be into it. Like, I can't right now go to... What's a good vacation spot? right now, at, when I get home, and someone says, hey, Max, we're going to the Bahamas for seven days. You gotta give me a little, a tiny bit of a heads up, please. Because I don't like to say this about myself, because it sounds, should I say, ignorant for a 17-year-old to say. I categorize, I, I, I categorize myself as a workaholic. I am on the computer making content for dang near 8, 9, 10, 11 hours a day, sometimes 12. Is it good for you? No. 
but I love to do what I do. I love to podcast. I love to edit. I love to make the shorts. I love to do all this kind of stuff. So vacations for me sometimes take me out of that. And for that reason, I don't like it. But if I plan a little something, hey, Max, do you want to go to New York in November and go watch some UFC fights and just go for like a few days? Yeah, I'm all in. Few days doing some crazy fun stuff that I'm all into. Then like that's dope. But you can't just drag me somewhere and I'm like gonna enjoy it fully. Uh that's kind of just me. I know that sounds bad, but that's just how I am, man. That, that's that's just how I am. So yeah, I like vacations. They're nice, they're charming, they're at a different speed, but um yeah, I just it just needs to be right time, right place, uh, which is not all the time, but that's fine. Cam then asks, very non-Nintendo question, which we love sometimes, which I got to answer for the cult fan base out there. He says, Max, what is your favorite Disney Infinity character? This is tough. I'm, I'm going to answer quick because a lot of you just want to hear Nintendo stuff. So uh, my favorite Disney Infinity character, it's either Baymax, who can fly, which is dope. One of the, the, one of the flying characters like Iron Man, Baymax, Nova. Um, Loki, I think, can fly. Can can Loki fly? I forget. Uh, I'd probably go Baymax, or sometimes I just like using Mickey Mouse from the uh, 3.0 category. I like the Sorcerer's Mickey Mouse too, but I like using the uh, 3.0 Mickey Mouse. Yeah, I'll go Baymax or Mickey Mouse. Now, for Nintendo questions. Sorry, guys. Tom FunTube asks, what new drivers would you like to see in the next Mario Kart game, and what new courses? Hmm. I would like to see. I would like to see Mario Kart kind of become Nintendo Kart, where you have Tom Nook, you got Zelda, you got all these Nintendo characters Samus, Fox, Captain Falcon. You got all these guys in Mario Kart. I would just like to see. Nintendo opened the gates and let everyone through. You get a cart, and you get a cart, and you get a cart, and I get a cart, and all these new characters come in. I just want to see everything new. In specific, I would love to see Tom Nook. Tom Nook in Mario Kart would be great. And what new courses would I want? Give me like a Luigi's Mansion course. Give me courses of series that we don't have. For any dead series that they have, make a course out of it. Give me a chibi robo course. As stupid as this sounds, give me a one-two switch course. Imagine how fun that would actually be. Give me a, I don't know, give me a, I'm trying to think, man. <sighs> Luigi's Mansion for sure. Chibi robo, one-two switch. Give me like a Freaky Forms Deluxe from the 3DS course. Give me like a Woohoo Island kind of thing, you know? Give me Wii stuff. Give me all of that, man. Just make things that are kind of a throwback to your previous self, you know? I would like that. NYD asks, anything you were particularly really interested in with this week's Direct slash Indie World? Anything like I need it? Um, anything like I need it? Uh, wobbly life, I need it. I I need wobbly life. Well, no, compared to the other games, I would say for any game that is like, I need it, I think I mostly need my Sims, probably. My Sims, a lot of you might have seen and been like, oh, what the heck is this? My Sims for me is like, that's going to be the game to play this holiday season. My Sims, guys. I would pick it up. My Sims is looking dope and was dope. Asher asks, what's your favorite KK Slider song from Animal Crossing? Smart. Um, I would have to go. So there's a few. But my number one would have to be Steel Cupcakes. Steel Cupcakes by KK Slider. It's a very sad song. It's very slow. It's mellow. But it reminds me of Christmas for whatever reason. And I've, I like that feeling. Once again, for whatever reason that is, I like it. I like it for that reason. I don't know why. I don't. I don't, I don't even know. But I like that one. Uh, I like Animal City, which is pretty much just the city folk city song, which is of course nice. 
I like Welcome Horizons, which is just the New Horizons theme. I like KK Salsa is a good, very upbeat one. I like those those four. The Grilled Cheese Gamer asks, what are your thoughts on Minecraft? Ooh, Minecraft, Minecraft. I love Minecraft. I've been playing Minecraft ever since I was, I, th- I think, I think six years old. Um, my siblings wanted it, so by default, I got it, um, and I fell in love with it. Because Minecraft, as a six-year-old, it's not hard to grasp at all. You're running around, you have w- WASD keys, and you can build whatever you want. You can play with your friends. It was like... I shouldn't say, uh, like, ahead of its time, but it was, like, so crazy that I would go from playing Mario Bros. and 2D and all this kind of stuff to go to playing Mo- to playing Minecraft, 3D, building whatever I want. It was fantastic. I love Minecraft. I don't play it as much anymore. I play it here and there, like, on some member-only streams. We'll do that. But, um, yeah. I, I wish I had more time to play it. Because now I'm just playing, like, MEO and stuff, which is great, of course. Like, you know, first first world problems here. But um, <laughs> Minecraft was fun. I still play it here and there. But, uh, yeah, Total Gem, uh, that's as that's very close to being, like, a like an all-time... How do I word this carefully? <laughs> that's close to being, like, my objective, like, feelings aside all-time greatest game of all time. Not favorite, but, like, all-time greatest of all time. That's, like, very close. Minecraft is amazing. Let's Go Gaming asks, do you think the Switch 2 will be powerful enough to run a game like Spider-Man 2 for the PS5? Um, I... That's that's tough. So, to run Spider-Man 2, you have to have a PS5. So, will the Switch 2 be as powerful as a PS5, essentially? I would say, I don't know much about power, but like from an outsider looking in, I would say if they can get it like anywhere at all close to being as powerful as a PS5 or an Xbox, even even if it's not exactly, if they can get it close, that is a Nintendo home run. Because like for Nintendo, 4K consoles, any of that, that's like the human equivalent to going to the moon sticking a flag down then coming back like that's them making a 4k console it's not as easy like it's tough for them you know it's not tough for them but it's like to to keep things cost friendly then it gets kind of tough so my answer would be no but i think it will be a bigger step in power than maybe the rumors are the rumors are saying i think it'll be a lot more powerful than people are expecting it to be which is phenomenal so i'm looking forward to it expect the ghost asks do you think the prices for nintendo switch online and expansion pack memberships along with the switch game vouchers will change on the switch too my answer is no my answer is no because here's the thing i you know It's no secret that Nintendo is making absolute bank off of having Switch online. No secret. They're they're making millions. More than that, you know? And so I think things get dicey if you change the price. You you know, this entire time Nintendo has talked about Switch 2, they always say we want to have the smoothest transition possible to the next console. You don't want to make people cancel their Switch membership to buy the Switch 2 version. You want them to have the exact same thing, but just bring it over to Switch 2, and they didn't cancel their payment, they didn't sign up for for a new thing, it's the exact same cost. Now, of course, they will add things to the online expansion pack. They They will add all this kind of stuff. But I think... In terms of membership, monthly or yearly payments, I think they will not have you cancel or change anything. It'll be like, hey, you already own the Switch Online, you know, pack. Good for you. It's right here on Switch 2 as well. I think the last thing they want you to do is cancel it. Because then they might lose money. You might not sign up for the next one. Whereas Farmer Joe out there might even forget that he has a Switch Online membership. You don't want him to remember i guess and then cancel it's tough to explain but it's like you just want the smoothest transition possible 
It's like if if Netflix was shutting down and they were making Netflix too. You don't want to have to cancel everyone's payment because a lot of people out there probably forgot that they even have a Netflix account, you know? You want to keep all those alive to keep making money. So that's my take. Phoenix Smith asks, what is one port you want on the Switch that's on the Wii U that is not Nintendo Land? My answer to that is probably Wii Party U. Wii Party U would not work on the Switch because it's very gamepad involved, but that would be like a home run. Give me Wii Party freaking U, and I would be having a field day. Now, that game is better with friends. Don't have a lot, but I would just love to have that. Not even just like preserved, but just like, just have it, you know, just have it on Switch on the newest console. That would be great. You could also give me Animal Crossing Amiibo Festival, and I wouldn't be too upset. A lot of you are probably f- like, Max, why would you want that one? I'm an, I'm an Animal Crossing fan. There is still some joy to be had in that game. I wouldn't mind that being ported over, honestly. I mean, I would buy it, wouldn't I? So I would take it. Finally, the Wii Gamer official asks, in your opinion, what is the best RPG Nintendo has made? Simple answer. I think I know it. Yep, I know it. Paper Mario, The Thousand Year Door. Now, admittedly, I've not played every single Nintendo RPG out there, but I think it's got to be Thousand Year Door. Thousand Year Door, you know, whenever I talk about games, there's there's always those nitpicks. There's always those things that you like and those things that you don't like. Thousand Year Door, I can't, I can hardly name one thing that I did not like. Story, was phenomenal. Nothing really was bad about the game. Like, it was just good overall. Like, I just liked it overall. It was nice. It was good. It was fantastic. I loved it, you know? So, there's not much bad I can say about it. By default, I believe it is the best Nintendo RPG. I'm loving the Mario and, and, and Luigi stuff that I'm playing right now. I'm loving the... I, I love the previous Paper Mario game for the N64, but this one's, like, different levels. So, I vote for that. But that is it, my friends, for the Mario Matter episode number 104. We will be back on set next week with a guest. It'll be a fantastic time. And thank you all for listening. If you're on YouTube, hit the good old subscribe. If you're on Spotify or, or Apple or anywhere, please leave us a rating. It takes just like 30 seconds of your time, if even that. If that, probably 10 seconds. But, you know, either way, you might have to navigate there, then click the buttons it might take you 30 seconds it might take you two seconds who knows that is the best way to support us uh another way to support us would also be through channel memberships on youtube you can pay monthly and get bonus episodes and all that kind of cool stuff and with that said i will see you all in the next podcast episode on the set back at home i'll see you all then adios